What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, I wanna share with you a Shopify dropshipping store that's currently for sale on flipper.com for 40,000 US dollars. The reason I wanna share this particular store with you is because I believe that everybody watching this video right now has the capability to achieve the same level of success as these guys. So typically when I do a video like this, I'll show you the store listing on flipper.com so you can see how much money it's made. I'll then go on to show you the Shopify store, show you the best selling products, show you the ad campaigns so you can see all of the inner workings basically of these successful businesses. Today will be no different. However, today this store isn't quite as successful as the usual stores I show you. So typically there'll be stores that have generated well in excess of a million dollars. They're turning over when in excess of 10 grand a month in profit. And the reason I want to share these guys with you is because their level of success is modest in comparison. A beginner is not going to go from naught to turning over millions of dollars in a very short time. It's going to take a lot of trial and error. It's going to take a significant amount of commitment and a tiny bit of luck as well. However, I truly believe everybody watching this video right now, whether you're a beginner, whether you're experienced, is capable of achieving something similar to this, certainly within the next six to 12 months. So the store in question is called Hyper Crave Lighting. As I've already mentioned, it's currently for sale on flipper.com for 40,000 US dollars. That is the asking price and kind of like an over view it's two years old the monthly profit is currently two thousand us dollars and whilst that may not be a massive amount in comparison to some of the other stores i've shown you guys um, i've been talking to a lot of people recently and most people get into drop shipping not because they want to become millionaires in the next two or three weeks or some ridiculous kind of outcome or goal like that it's because they want to try and make a few hundred extra dollars each month or an extra thousand dollars each month just to make life a bit more comfortable and then who knows what happens after that maybe they'll continue to scale and eventually look to replace their current income. But in this case, these guys are only doing two grand a month in profit and we'll get into the details and I'll show you how many hours they're putting into this business in a second. So you can see that even though two grand might seem quite modest, when you compare that to how many hours a week they're actually putting into the business, it's actually a very good return on their time. So the profit margin is 9%, which is on the low side. Um, typically I won't run a product unless I can make at least 20% on it um, for a number of reasons, mainly taxes. But again, I'll get into that in a second. I'll show you that if you were to create something similar to this, how you would probably double, if not triple, those profit margins because this in terms of its kind of bones this is the bare minimum when it comes to a Shopify dropshipping business and I'll show you why they are pretty much doing the very bare minimum so they have a Shopify store they have a product and they're using Facebook ads to generate traffic to that product there's no kind of back-end processes or automations or even me email marketing set up which is crazy to think that somebody can make this level of money doing literally the bare minimum so the key highlights of this business don't skip this part of the video it's super important just to give you some context of how how I was going to say easy it is to create business like this. I don't you like using a word like that, but this is probably the easiest. Not that it's actually easy, but of all the dropshipping businesses, this is probably the one of the easiest um, in terms of replication. So it's a Shopify dropshipping lighting store with established trustworthy suppliers. That being key, they're not using AliExpress. They're also in a brilliant niche, which is the LED niche, the lighting niche, which is perfect for social media because light products typically create really nice effects, which are great for gathering attention and getting eyeballs on your ad creatives. They have fast delivery times for all products, which is a massive misconception when it comes to drop shipping. People hear drop shipping and they think crappy, cheap plastic products that take weeks to arrive from AliExpress when that is just not the case. Huge growth opportunity because he says that he is terrible at Facebook advertising. So he's probably not terrible, the fact that he's able to make a profit, but we'll jump in a bit deeper and see um, if there's a further explanation of this. So 99% of the store sales have come from running Facebook ads. So anybody who's saying Facebook ads is dead is just talking nonsense in my opinion. I'm not the right person to grow this business further. Facebook marketing, meta ads are complex and frustrating to me and haven't been successful in getting consistent results. I've had success making positive ROI on my ad spend by running many very small campaigns at one to four dollars per day, which is interesting. Additionally, I've only just added any sort of email marketing slash funnel to the store in the past few months. For years, the store has relied 100% on customers making a purchase on their first visit since I have not had lead magnets or landing pages collecting email addresses, which is absolutely crazy. And that's where that additional double, if not triple of profit margins come from because the most expensive leads or the most expensive customers that you acquire will be those ones that buy your product on first instance. 
direct marketing, spending $10 in order to get $20 back. Once you have that initial lead and you have that existing audience, getting people back onto your store, as long as you provide a good service, um, is a lot, lot cheaper. And that's where bigger and better profit margins come from on basically capitalizing on your existing existing customer base. Over the past few years, I've only tried a few small campaigns on these platforms with TikTok, Pinterest, and Google Ads, like you said, 99% from Facebook. Here's the interesting part though, the store can be successfully ran on one to two hours per day. So if he's working seven days a week, that's 14 hours a week for a 25 grand year wage. And that is on the store that only has the bare bones of an e-commerce business. Spending a little bit more time on this business, I have no doubt they'll be able to double, if not triple that level of profit. Before we take a look at the Shopify store, then let's jump into its expenses. So product costs, that's cost of goods sold, is marketing, Facebook ads, about six grand a month. And payment processing fees, um, so that'll be the um, transaction fee that Shopify charges. Um, and of course the Shopify fees, so that will be apps and the subscription that is on. What's good to see about this particular business as well is it's still fairly active. So it's consistently still doing over 10K per month. So March of 2023, which is last month, I'm still doing over 10K a month. So the products you're about to see in this video are still working right now. So there's still that potential to achieve this same level of results, if not better. So we jump onto a Shopify store now. Um, I'll make myself a bit smaller so you can and see it in its entire glory. Um, without being too harsh, this is the very bare bones and basics of a well-designed Shopify store. I'm very confident that everybody watching this video could design something equivalent, if not a higher spec than this. He's using the free debut theme. So I would guess, hazard a guess, just with the installation of a more optimized and paid theme, he could probably bump up his conversion rate and start making money almost instantly overnight that way. Um, and if we go to his best selling products, he has the pinnacles, which are these, which I'm assuming are these LED lights to go up each side. So given the fact that he's turned over or turning over on average 10K a month, um, this is his best selling product at the moment. He's not selling a cheap, crappy product. Um, this is clear given the fact that he's selling it for $150. And that is the smaller size as well, which is really interesting to see. When you get into the realm of selling these more expensive products, he We'll try and find it in a second on AliExpress to see what he's buying it for. In fact, we'll come back to them um, how much profit he's going to be making if I can find this product on AliExpress. If we just go back to his best selling products again, this is his second best selling product, which is $360. He has $280. He's not selling cheap products here. And where the advantage of this comes into play is that you can afford to spend a significant amount extra acquiring a customer. So if you're working on a $20 margin, then for every $20 you spend, you have to be acquiring a customer. Whereas if this guy's working on a $100, the margin he can reach tens of thousands of more people that are going to see his product for having to worry about actually converting one of those people plus the more people he reaches the more retargeting campaigns he can run and then the more likely he is to acquire those customers as well okay so let's talk numbers i've gone ahead found the product on aliexpress so all i've done is put in outdoor wall light i'm going to a grid view actually um and I'm fairly certain that all of these are pretty much the same product, given the fact that um, they're all using very similar imagery and the fact that they're all similar price too. So what we're gonna do is I've got this supplier here. I'm just gonna marry up these sizes. So 80, 120, 170. So he has an 80 here. It has a 120 and he has a 170 as well. So if we go for the 80, I believe was the smallest size he has. So he's selling the 80 centimeter one for $150. For this particular supplier, we can buy it for what, 60 quid, about $80. So he's working on about a 50% profit margin. So give or take, he has approximately $70 to spend in order to acquire each customer. That is as well, assuming they only buy one of these products. The chances of somebody buying, just buying one of these things would probably look a bit out of place. Like in the image, they want it either side of a doorway, either side of a window. So they're probably gonna be buying a couple of these things. Again, just helping bump up what that profit margin is and therefore increasing the leeway he has to acquire each customer. A way of bumping up his conversion rate instantly would be to have split payment options on here. So he could have Kalana, he could have Afterpay, he could have ShopPay, all those sorts of things. When you're asking somebody to spend in excess of $100 and if they're gonna be buying two or three of these things, they definitely 
definitely want that option of being able to split it if possible. Something I'd also do for a product like this, again, I think would instantly bump up that conversion rate is having a contact tab on here so the customer can call you up and talk to you about products like this. Again, when you're asking somebody to spend in the region of hundreds of dollars, they probably have one or two questions about the product. They may even want to speak to somebody on the phone about it. Just to take a quick look at their About Us page, um, really nice touch, really great way to kind of um, build rapport and connection with any potential visitors. I'm assuming that's a picture of him with his family. So it's a great way of kind of humanizing the brand and making people feel comfortable about shopping with them. At the end of the day, people want to shop with people that they feel comfortable with. And it's not always a case of cheapest price wins. People would much rather spend their money if it's going towards a family business like this, where it probably means more to them than it would say like an Amazon or a massive DIY type store. Okay, so we've seen how much money they're making. We've seen what their best selling products are. Um, let's take a look at how they're achieving those sorts of sales. And remember in the beginning, it said 99% of sales are coming from Facebook. So if we head onto the Facebook ads library, and um, there's nine different ads they're currently running at the moment. These are the ads that were launched in March that were responsible for generating that $12,000, I believe it was. And what you'll find is there's two types of products. In fact, one, two, three types of products, if not four types of products that they're currently advertising at the moment. What we'll do is we'll open up this one and just take a look, seeing as that's their best selling product. So elevate your outdoor living space, simply perfect luxury lighting, our lowest price, super short, sharp, to the point, no need of crazy explanations or even a call to action with a link. And the reason being is because the image says everything. Like it's obvious what they're selling, elevate your outdoor living space simply perfect luxury lighting that's gonna draw attention to these two light beams either side of this opening doorway. Like I said, most people will probably buy two of these things. I would probably remove the Hypercrave logo at the top. Maybe that's important and they've split tested that and the reason they've put that is so people start recognizing their logo. And also what they've done is they've given the product a name, The Pinnacles. Rather than just naming it Modern Waterproof Outdoor Lights, they've given the product an actual identity, which increases the perceived value of it, the pinnacles, which is a really nice touch and name. What they're also doing is running this as multiple versions. As we can see, it's a dynamic ad. So it's gonna run the ad with everything is the same, but the actual imagery itself. So it allows Facebook basically to split test it and then come back and say which um, image is performing the best. What's really interesting is they're able to sell these high ticket products, I would call them, I'm using image ads. And I would guess, I would say where the strategy comes into play for this one is that when you run image ads, typically your CPM, that's the one I'm looking for. Typically your CPM is a lot cheaper, which basically means you can reach a lot more people for less. So I'm assuming they're adopting the strategy of kind of, I was gonna say spamming, not spamming people, but I imagine somebody doesn't buy one of these things the first time they see it. They probably need to see it three, four, five, maybe even six or seven times. So by using image ads and getting those cheaper CPMs, it allows them to reach those people more for less, if that makes sense. And so with that being said then guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up because I've covered all the points I wanted to touch on in this video about this business. And um, we've seen the business that's for sale. We've seen the kind of numbers and what's involved in the daily runnings of the business, how much money it's making. I've shown you their best selling products. I've shown you where to go to get those products. And I've also shown you how to advertise those products. Um, to make that money. So if you've enjoyed the video and you found any value whatsoever, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Um, any comments, questions, video suggestions, anything like that at all, put them down below. I will see them and I will get back to you. Thanks guys, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video on Wednesday. Cheers.